So I really like that video because I feel like it touches on a lot of the different experiences that you could possibly have as a Peace Corps volunteer. So it's really varied in terms of the projects you could be doing or geographically, you know, where you could be working. So it's kind of really interesting to see that. Um, so I think it would be really great just to kind of learn more about you guys and what your background is and, and sort of what brings you uh, here today. I'm, uh, my name is Kelly Dolan and I work as the Peace Corps recruiter here at UVM. So I have an office just right upstairs here at, at Morrill Hall, um, which is always, my door is definitely always open if you ever want to meet and chat. Um, and I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Guatemala for two years and then also worked in Panama for six months. So I'm more than happy to answer any general questions that you have about Peace Corps, but also any sort of questions about my experience as well. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to kind of, if you guys wouldn't mind introducing yourselves and just kind of saying, um, you know, a little bit about what brings you here today. I know sometimes it's because you've done volunteer work previously and really enjoyed it, or maybe you knew somebody who was a volunteer, whatever it may be, um, it would be great to kind of to know more about you guys. So yeah, would you go ahead? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm Wes. I'm majoring in um, second year education English. Nice. Yeah, English is actually one of the big areas of recruiting, so there's definitely a lot of opportunities if you're interested in, in TESOL. So, like, Andrew's actually going to be doing that hopefully soon, so, yeah. Okay. I'm Emily. I'm a first-year chem major and nutrition minor, and I've done a lot of volunteering kind of with a health aspect, so I'm mm -hmm. very interested in, like, continuing with that. Definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities, especially, um, a lot of the programs are working with health centers in the community, so that may be something that would really mm -hmm. interest you. So, yeah. um, I'm Andrew. I work with Kelly in the Peace Corps Recruiting Office, and I've been nominated to be a volunteer in September for Teaching English. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ned, and I'm a first year. I'm a major in uh, studio art and a minor in political science. And I'm kind of just uh, getting my feet wet with this. Right, yeah. Well, this will be great because it's just going to be kind of like the general information and everything just to kind of get an overview. So. Um, I'm Anita. Um, I'm graduating in May with a major in Women's and Gender Studies and Psychology. Um, and I have a nomination to leave in October. Nice. What's your program, Eric? Community and Economic Development. Okay, very great. Yeah, it seems like a lot of those. Um, assignments are working with women, so hopefully yeah. the, your Community assignment... Community and economic development seems so broad. Right, exactly. So it's a matter of, you know, what you may be. A lot of it is microfinancing, a lot of those different projects. So, yeah, I'll have to wait and see what ends up happening. So thanks for coming. Yeah. Hello, I'm Melissa. Um, I'm a nursing major. I am very interested in learning about different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really know much about these courses. Right. There's actually a really great program that just started where it's um, for doctors and medical professionals. So it's kind of the idea of very similar to like Doctors Without Borders or something like that. So that may be worth checking out considering your nursing background. So thanks for coming. I'm Kristen. I have been out of school for probably seven years. I work at Green Mountain Coffee Roasters and I do a lot of volunteering over there. Right, yeah, I mean, it's definitely kind of like you can see in the video, there's people of all ages and experience levels, so, absolutely. Um, I'm Kelsey, I'm a first year, I'm a biochemistry major, and I've been abroad and fell in love with community service abroad and, like, working through the barriers and just making like, the connections with different people, so I'm nice. excited to do it again. Definitely. Where did you study abroad? Um, I didn't study abroad. I went for a month in the summer to Madagascar. And oh my gosh. I was working in, down there. What kind of community stuff? Uh, we went all over northern Madagascar. Uh, when we were doing the service, it was in, in Pepe in a school teaching English and nice. helping like fix up the school. like. Great. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Hi. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I've been out of school for a while. I mm -hmm. taught abroad in Poland. Um, <coughs> I've been a chef, and I am currently, I live 
an hour and a half away. Oh, wow. And I've been renovating the house for eight right. years, and I'm done, and I'd like to go back to teaching abroad. Definitely. <laughs> so I'm just here to learn about the Peace Corps. Yeah, well, great. I'm so happy that you can make it. Thanks. Great. Um, awesome. So as I'm going through this information, if you have any questions at all that come up, feel free to interrupt, and we can just you know talk about whatever it is that you're thinking. Um, but yeah, just to sort of give you guys a general overview about Peace Corps and everything. So in terms of the mission of the organization, it's kind of um, interesting to sort of consider this, because I think sometimes um, we think about Peace Corps as like this de developmental agency, which it is to a certain degree, but a lot of it is kind of about that cultural exchange that happens. So the first goal is kind of, you know, like you guys mentioned, you have a very a varied skill set just in this room alone, and so it's about the technical skills that you guys bring to the table as somebody with background in nutrition or somebody who's interested in agriculture. Um, so yeah, bringing that as a volunteer to the country where you would be working. <coughs> and the second um, goal is kind of more about the cultural exchange that takes place. So you as a volunteer, having grown up in the U.S. and kind of sharing that experience, you know, what, it, what was that like, you know? Um, being somebody that was raised in the States. And then also hearing about, okay, so, you know, being raised in Guatemala or being raised in Uganda, what was that like? And so sort of sharing that back and forth. Um, and the other idea is kind of, you know, you ex sharing your experiences, for example, I'm sure, with friends and family when you came back from Madagascar. <coughs> it's something really great, because, you know, I'm sure that a lot of them haven't necessarily been to Madagascar. So it's a good opportunity and that is sort of the third goal of the organization. So kind of having it go beyond the experience itself, which is really kind of a great aspect of, of service. So, yeah. Any questions at all about that? Okay. So just kind of general information about the Peace Corps itself. So in total, it's 27 months. Um, so that's the three months of training, and that's really kind of a little bit of everything. So it's health. It's um, you know technical training. It's really intensive language training, and just getting you ready for for your Peace Corps service, right? So then, once you finish that three months, you head out to the community, and you you engage and you start your your service in whatever your program area is. So that's kind of you know, as I say, where the rubber meets the road, and you kind of are able really to get into the work that you're going to be doing for for your time there. So yeah, is anybody at all intimidated by the the 27 month? time period yeah I mean it definitely sounds like quite a time commitment for sure but um, I think most people that have done Peace Corps say it goes by really quickly or thinking about you know maybe your junior and senior years of high school how quickly that may have passed or your freshman and sophomore years of college it tends to fly by so yeah. so like we were kind of you know talking about in terms of different ages and everything so who is the typical Peace Corps volunteer, and it's kind of hard to describe because there is kind of a variety in terms of who decides to to become a volunteer. So it's really um, a lot of people tend to be fresh out of college. But that being said, there are people that are mid-career professionals, those that are retirement age. So it definitely varies quite a bit. So yeah, um, yeah, and it's great because those people that are a little bit later in the career definitely bring a whole new set of skills. It's sets and, and life experiences. So, yeah, 90% uh, have a college degree, so you guys are definitely in the right place as UVM students. And another interesting thing is that you can serve with a spouse, so that's coming up um, maybe down the line or, or sometime or sometime soon, then that's also an option. So. Okay, great. So in terms of what volunteers do, I know you mentioned you're interested in secondary education. And was that in English or? Nice. So a project that may be really well fit for, for your background would be the education project. And you can see it's just a really big percentage of volunteers that are, that are engaged in that project, so over 40%. So it's pretty incredible. Uh, but that being said, there's a lot of different projects available. Um, and Peace Corps tries to place you according to what it is that you have. Um, for a skill set. So they're kind of looking at your experiences and, and trying to match you up. Yeah. Any questions at all about that in terms of project areas or what you would be doing as a volunteer? Yeah. Yeah, what would you do if you were in the environment program? Yeah, that's
that's a good question. So if you were in the environment program, it could be various things. Oftentimes, for example, it may be partnering with um, a national park doing things on ecotourism promotion. Another option would be doing more um, environmental education. So working in a school community and trying to you know, talk to them about the importance of, of conservation and, and those types of things. So those are definitely two really strong examples in terms of what, what you could be doing. So yeah, all Peace Corps volunteers kind of have this partnership that happens. So you have that host country agency, they call it. So that's the local school or the local health center or the local national park that you sort of collaborate with. So, is the three month training based in the country or do you do a right. month here and then? It's actually based in the country, which is really nice. And you live with the host family during that time, so it's really helpful in terms of kind of acclimating to the, to the culture and everything and to, to what you're going to be experiencing as a volunteer. Yeah. yeah, has anyone here lived with the host family before? Yeah, how was that experience, Andrew? Um, I lived with the host family in Nicaragua for a month and it was a uh, it was an adjustment. Right. Um, I don't know if it was, it's hard to say because like it was only a month, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know, it's because like so much was different in general that like living with someone else wasn't the biggest change, but I don't know, people are pretty accommodating. They sign up for it most of the time, so it's like, yeah, they're, exactly. they were always there if I ever had a problem, uh -huh. like they provided for me, I don't know. They made me food, <laughs> worked out well. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's nice kind of too, like, did you feel as though it helped you in terms of introducing you to the community and kind of orienting you a yeah, little bit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, they had like a, they had like a little barbecue outside their house, so they, um, I don't know, I helped out in that, which was fun, and I met a lot of people. Uh -huh. But I mean, like, especially in Latin America, if anybody's been there, like, it's not like um, you live with your aunts and your uncles and your cousins, so... It's like a lot of family members, so it was cool to meet a lot of people. Definitely. Pretty right off the bat. Absolutely, yeah. It definitely helps in terms of trying to fit into a community, I think. So, yeah, I think it's one of the favorite aspects of a lot of people's service, although it's sometimes one of the more challenging aspects. So, um, yeah. so in terms of where volunteers go, this is definitely a big question in a lot of people's minds. You know, where am I going to end up living? So as you can see, the, the largest contingency is really um, focused in Africa, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. But that being said, it's really across the map. And in terms of where Peace Corps decides to go, it's based on the countries and what they request, what the governments request in terms of the volunteer type that they would like. So it may be that they're really interested in having agricultural volunteers or health volunteers, whatever it is that they're looking for. <coughs> as an applicant, you can actually request geographic regions where you would like to serve, and Peace Corps takes that into consideration. But more than anything, they're trying to find a place where you can be most effective as a volunteer. And I think a lot of volunteers would probably say that um, the volunteers that are happiest are the ones that feel like they're making a contribution. I don't know if you guys have found that in, in your own work, that you know when you're being successful and you feel like you actually are, are helping your presence there, then it's a huge part of kind of you know feel, feeling fulfilled in that work. So. Yeah, any questions at all about that? <coughs> okay. So in terms of safety and security, it's definitely a top priority for the organization. So they take it really seriously. And I think one of the big benefits of going through Peace Corps as opposed to another organization, perhaps, is that you have such a great support system there with you. Um, and because of the fact that oftentimes, well always, Peace Corps has a really strong relationship with the embassy in that country, so they're really privy to a lot of information that, that keeps you updated um, in terms of what's happening in the country and stuff like that. So it's really helpful to have, feel like you, you're being supported during your service. So, yeah. I know it's something like as terms of, like they mentioned in the video, you know, being a woman serving, um, the different concerns that come with that, um, and trying to be, you know, considerate of, of your, that you're studying with community and, and the norms may be really different. So, you know, the gender studies background, that's something that may be something that you've considered a lot, I'm sure. So, yeah, I mean, it felt very prepared in terms of stepping into that as a volunteer. Not that there weren't challenges, but... <laughs> Great. So in terms of 
you know, the benefits during service is a lot of really great benefits for doing Peace Corps, especially when you kind of compare it to other opportunities in terms of doing service work. So one is, uh, you know, definitely, especially for a lot of you coming out of undergraduate, the big concern being, you know, financially, those student loans that are coming up. Um, typically, your loans are deferrable, so you just want to check with your lending agency to confirm that. And then also, if you have any Perkins loans, it's 10% cancellation for every year that you serve, so that's a really great added benefit. Um, your travel expenses are paid to and from the country, which is really great considering that flying to some of these places would definitely be quite cost prohibitive. Um, and you are provided a living allowance, so it's kind of um, interesting because you always think, oh my gosh, you know, how I remember getting my tax return and thinking, how the heck did I live off of, you know, $2,200 for an entire year, but the cost of living is so low in a lot of these locations that it's more than sufficient to cover your basic needs and expenses, which is really, really cool. Um, vacation time. So if you're going to be living in this amazing place, um, it's great to be able to take, to take advantage of it and kind of explore. So um, they definitely understand that and encourage in volunteers to kind of learn more about the country that they're serving in. And so, yeah, that's a big aspect of service is just kind of learning about the country that, that you're living in. How many of you guys have, have studied abroad at all? Or, you know, Andrew, yeah. And Nidia, where were you for study abroad? Australia. Australia, yeah. right. And so did you have the opportunity to travel in your program? Yeah, I went to Indonesia actually, and then oh, I also wow. traveled around Australia. Yeah, so it's nice not only, you know, the country itself, but neighboring mm -hmm. countries and everything. That's great. What about you? Where did you? I'm in town in Poland. I, I just, my own, I go to English classes in different Eastern European and Germany. Yeah. For a few weeks, I got right. a big cycle. Yeah, so it's kind of a big aspect of yeah. living abroad is being able to explore, definitely. Is that a Monday through Friday? Um, if there's two days per month? Usually how it works is um, you have like one or two weekends per month where you're you know free to go to like a neighboring city or visit another friend. So that doesn't count as vacation time. That's kind of, you know, just you kind of being able to have your own free time and everything. But vacation is kind of more where you're taking a more extended leave of absence. And you can save those days up. So you could wait six months and then you have a 12 day block and then take, you know, big trip all together, which is a great way to be able to explore. So, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, full medical and dental coverage, so that's nice. You don't have to pay anything, which is really, really great if you get sick or, or need any attention. <coughs> and there's no cost. Of, obviously, you get paid for doing service. So, in terms of coming home, I know a lot of people say that you know, sometimes coming back to the States is even a bigger adjustment than when they first got to country as a volunteer. Um, so the nice thing is that they provide a little bit of a cushion for you. So you have about $7,500. So when you come back, you're not in panic mode, but you have a little bit um, of money to kind of support you and before you find a job and all of that. Um, the other thing is just kind of the fact that in terms of being able to put Peace Corps experience on your resume, it's really interesting. Every time I go in for, you know, an interview since I've gotten home, I always am asked about my Peace Corps experience. It's something that really jumps out to people that are, you know, looking for a potential candidate to fill a slot. And oftentimes it's there's RPCVs, Return Peace Corps volunteers that work for the agency possibly. And that's really great to, to make that connection there in terms of networking. <coughs> there's also um if any of you are interested in federal employment, is that anything that somebody's considering at all? Well, if it is down the line, there's some really great advantages to having worked for Peace Corps in terms of having um, advantages and sort of being more competitive for those slots. Do you start off as a G something or other? Or a G. The, when you apply for a federal job, mm -hmm. have you ever had experience before you've been in a in the military, oh, how you're, right. I'm not sure what the, the letter breakdown is, but what happens basically is if you meet the minimum requirements for the job, your application automatically rises to the top of the stack. So that's the non-competitive eligibility. So yeah, it makes you exceptionally competitive for those positions. Um, yeah, so it's definitely something worth taking advantage of. It's only for one year after service, so it's something you have to track, but yeah, it's really, really nice. Also, especially um, 
How many of you guys are, are planning on kind of settling in Vermont if you if you know that yet or interested in living here kind of more permanently, possibly, or <laughs> just still trying to figure it out? Um, well, it's really great the fact that here in Vermont there's more Peace Corps volunteers than any other state in the country. So that's really, really cool in terms of, you know, especially here at UVM, there's a ton of return volunteers. And so it's a really great network. There's a Green Mountain Return Peace Corps volunteer network, which is a really cool um, group to be involved in. So. Um, so another great benefit, like I mentioned, um, I'm a fellow here at UVM, so it's great in terms of providing me with some of the financial um, benefits of, of having been a volunteer and some scholarship money and everything. So, Are any of you guys considering graduate school at this point? Nice. What are you looking for? Um, med school. Med school. Okay, great. So especially in terms of um, you know, public health and stuff like that, they have a lot of really great scholarship opportunities. So, yeah. What about you? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I know it seems like it's something that just yeah. naturally happens. It seems a lot of professors say you need to be competitive. <laughs> right, so. yeah, you need to, it's not just an undergrad, it's a graduate degree, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So yeah, there's kind of like two ways to go about this, and one is to combine service with Peace Corps, so you do a year's worth of coursework in the States, and then go abroad and do your two years of service based on whatever it is that you're going to be doing. And then you come back and you present kind of about your experience, sort of do you know your thesis or whatever it may be. So, for example, uh, St. Michael's has a TESOL program over there teaching English as a second language. It's really really great, and they do the Masters International. The other kind of route to do this is a fellows program. So, for example, here in CDAE, they have a fellows program for the Community Development and Masters in Public Administration program. So, it's really great. It's a lifetime eligibility for those programs, so it's scholarships that are available to you 20 years down the line after you finish service or immediately when you come home. So it's kind of a nice bonus for sure. So yeah, grad school. <laughs> <coughs> all right, so have you guys had a chance at all to look at the online application? I know some of you have already done the online application. Anyone else taking a gander at it? Or? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Well, it's um, the website's really a great resource, and if you just go to that um, link at the bottom, that's kind of your first step. So you just go there, fill out the online application, and that's kind of how you get the ball rolling. And the great part about being here at UVM is that there's a recruiter on campus, so it won't be me next year, but it'll be somebody else. And um, you can do your interview right here on campus, which is super convenient and uh, definitely great to have that as a resource here. Um, so yeah, and then after that, Anita, you could tell what happens after that. Um, after your interview, yeah, you get a nomination, and then mm -hmm. you wait a really long time <laughs> to hear more, I guess. Yeah. Um, the nomination, or at least mine, had a departure date, which right. is tentative, and uh, it gave me community and economic development mm -hmm. as um, my program. Right. The program. Yeah. yeah, so it kind of gives you a better, so it becomes clearer kind of as you move through the process. And eventually you get your invitation, which says what country you'll be going to, which is really, really exciting. So, yeah. So I think it's really interesting to kind of consider, like, in terms of what you want to be doing long term, how does Peace Corps kind of fit into that? So, I mean, sometimes I think it's great because you don't know what you want to be doing long term. And it's a great opportunity to be able to explore a bunch of different options. Um, but that being said, if you are somebody who really knows what you want to do, it's great in that sense because you're able to really gain some serious expertise in another language and some really incredible international experience. So that being said, if you if you do get accepted in your in your choice of country and you're sent to a country you're not enthused about, is mm -hmm. there any way to change that? Like in terms of if you get your invitation and you're not exactly thrilled about the country you're invited to? Um, it used to be that you could turn down your first invitation, but that's something that's really strongly discouraged because it's so hard to get you a slot mm -hmm. and get you an invite, then, you know, turn it down is, it's, I don't, I think I rarely hear about it. Um, and they try and consider, so for example, if you have really important reasons why you do not want to go to certain countries, that's something that you can voice, especially in the interview. 
that that is really your opportunity to kind of be like, these are my interests, these are the reasons why, and these are why I'm particularly drawn to working in these areas. So that's definitely a really important time to sort of express what it is that you're thinking. So I would definitely um, encourage you to do that. That being said, it's a part of applying to Peace Corps, I guess, is sort of being open and understanding that you know, you're opening yourself up to service and kind of saying, all right, where can I be most effective? And where can my skills be most useful, you know? And kind of like I was saying before, that's usually when people are happiest and when they feel like they're actually doing some good. Um, yeah. So oftentimes it's kind of, you know, wondering, especially for people that may be more of a generalist background, so those psych, history, um, anthro majors, social, all those topics, topic areas, it's kind of hard. You look at those program areas and you say, where do I fit into this puzzle? Um, and so it may be a matter of kind of strengthening your application by gaining some relevant experience with the project areas that Peace Corps works in. So these are just some definite high needs areas. So for example, if you're open to you know teaching English as a foreign language, then working you know with a Vermont refugee resettlement program or another program, gaining some of that practical experience would be a great way to kind of make yourself a more competitive applicant. Also, if you can take any French or Spanish classes as a student here at UVM, I would highly encourage you to do that. Any questions at all about that? So you said you work in agriculture a little bit, or? Um, yeah. Nice. You do that during the summer months, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's definitely something, even if you're not majoring in it, it doesn't matter, that's a practical experience, and that's, that's definitely something you want to let them know about. So in terms of social media, and um, Peace Corps is kind of all over the place, which is really, really cool. Um, the Tumblr site is really, really great, and the video that I just showed you guys is actually on the YouTube website, so that's definitely worth um, taking a look at. And so that's just my contact information. So like I've mentioned before, um, my office is just right upstairs here. And you know, my work is just to kind of help you guys out in terms of the application process and answer any questions that you may have. So I'm more than happy if it's you know, something that you're considering but you're not sure and you're kind of going back and trying to figure out if it's right for you. And I think it's great sometimes to have that conversation and figure, figure out how it kind of may you know, contribute to what you're trying to to do and see how it kind of fits into things. So more than happy to, to sit down and talk about that. Um, yeah, and then also there is a Facebook page, so if you guys want to follow us, then it's great. We're, um, me and Andrew are working on planning an event, hopefully, uh, coming up. It's just going to be a storytelling event, so it should be really great. It's going to be a bunch of return volunteers telling their best Peace Corps story, which should be pretty entertaining. <laughs> so. So like I mentioned, I was a volunteer in Guatemala for a couple of years, and um, a really great way to communicate with people back in the States is um, through blogs. So I kept this blog, and I wrote about my experiences in the community and everything, and um, <coughs> I used that, the word cloud. Have you guys heard of word clouds before in any of your classes? Or So yeah, basically, um, in case you haven't seen them, I just basically entered the, the website for my blog, and the words that figure most prominently here are the ones that um, came up most um, frequently in the blog. So it's kind of interesting because I feel like it's a pretty good reflection of my time there. So you see, um, you know, Mayan, woman, uh, feminist, malnutrition, privilege. A lot of these were things that really were a big part of uh, my service. So. Um, for better or for worse, right? It was definitely a really great learning experience and a really great community. Um, I was working with a really small organization, really grassroots, and I felt like um, that was a really positive aspect of my services, working with those women um, and being able to, to work really on a very personal level. Um, it's really rewarding. So those are just some photos. Like I mentioned, it was a Mayan community, so you can see it. It's just a really traditional clothes. It's funny to come back 
to the States and everybody's wearing jeans and t-shirts and I remember being sort of depressed because I was used to really, really colorful clothes all the time and everything. So it's a bit of a shock to the system to say the least. And I still miss tortillas on a regular basis. <laughs> okay, so any questions at all about things? Yeah. Um, before you leave um, for your first three months of training mm -hmm. in your country, what is there any training before that in the States? That's a great question. Yeah, there's actually staging. So it used to be a couple days, but I think now it's they kind of cram everything into one day. So oftentimes, it, it depends on geographically where you're going, but it'll be in San Francisco or Miami or Washington, D.C. So everybody from your training group gets together, and you have like two days, and you kind of talk about general stuff and sort of just kind of mentally preparing for for leaving country and tying up loose ends. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a nice feeling just to kind of have everybody in one place and sort of okay. get to know each other a little bit, a, a bit of a more um, yeah. familiar environment. So you all, environment. like, get on the plane together? And yes, it's okay. kind of funny. We, I remember taking, you know, we took, like, this little coach bus down to the airport, and it was, like, 3 a.m., and we're standing outside the airport and getting ready to get on our plane and everything for, like, a 5.30 flight. Or, yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of... It's nice because you feel like you have that sort of camaraderie with your group. Yeah. So, I, and I think a lot of people who are volunteers, like um, I'm really, really close with the people that I, you know, were in my group, and kind of that's a really cool connection too. It's not only the people in your community, but also the people that you meet through service that are volunteers. So, it's really, really a great aspect. And then so, when you get there, you don't know exactly which part of the country you're going to be. Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting. So. You kind of get to country, and they they may know in terms of all the different sites that they have picked out and all the different programs, but they usually don't know who will be doing all those different sites or where they will be going and stuff. So during the course of service, they're sort of um, they're sort of assessing what your expertise level is, what your language level is, what your comfort level is in terms of being in a more rural site versus maybe a more um, accessible site. And so during that time, they're kind of trying to figure out where you would be most um, effective as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's why it's a really great idea to have a close relationship with Peace Corps staff, so you can kind of express, you know, yeah. you know I'm really interested in, in working in this type of community, or I'd really like to work for, you know, a larger organization to, to gain that type of experience because I'm interested in doing international development work, for example. Mm -hmm. If that's your motivation, so. Or for me, I was like, I don't care where I go. I was like, I want to work in a really small community, and I want to work in a really good, good organization. And so that was kind of my, my goal. I was like, I really want to work with a, an organization that's very together and, and cares. And they gave me that. I was really, really fortunate. So, yeah, I would say that's really good advice, actually. Ask for a great organization. Um, yeah. Any other questions that you guys have? Yeah. And you two probably can answer this, but what's like a good time to start applying and right. like everything if you want to yeah. go pretty soon out of like college? When did you start applying, Andrew? Um, I don't know when I started, but I hit like submit the like late November. Okay. And they gave so me this year. of, of like, 2012. Okay. And they said after the next couple steps of the application and the interview, I was nominated to go in September. Right. So, yeah. the, so that's the, the like nine months, months to a year is yeah. a pretty good guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest like starting probably your application like a month before you want to hit submit, at least. Right. Yeah, just to get everything together. Yeah, what about you, Anita? When did you? Um, I started my application in October, and I spent a lot of time on it, and I submitted it in October. Uh -huh. But then I didn't hear back for a while, and I was missing or a form doesn't upload properly oh okay. so i would say maybe even allow for that allow yeah. for something to backfire yeah if you're if you're kind of hoping to leave fairly quickly after you graduate you could start as early as spring semester your junior year and it's nice if you do that because then you kind of know what you're doing after you graduate you have a much better idea while you know maybe your friends are kind of still on the job search and having a little bit of a meltdown, which usually happens to a lot of people during senior year, then you really know what you're doing and it's kind of comforting and you can relax a little bit. So, yeah, spring semester junior year is a great time to get rolling. Yeah. Any other questions that you guys have? Okay, cool.
Cool. Well, I'm going to hang around for a few minutes. So um, if you have any kind of more individual questions, then feel free to ask. Um, and feel free to take some pizza before you leave, especially pepperoni because I don't eat meat. So, <laughs> and, um, yeah, thanks for coming. And uh, hopefully we'll talk with you guys soon and keep in touch and everything. So, yeah, thanks.